Last year, I called the Pixel 3 XL the worst flagship phone I've ever used. I admit I was very harsh in my review, which got a lot of hateful comments, but I have to stand by my opinions, not only because the 3XL had a lot of software issues, but because it was also quite a bit behind hardware-wise when you consider the $900 price point. So what about half a year later, now that Google has released the 3A and 3A XL? Well, to be honest, my mind is completely changed this time around, and this time, I'm calling the 3A XL budget perfection. The 3A doesn't have top of the line specs like the Pixel 3. The CPU is a bit weaker, the graphics are even behind the Pixel 2, and the display is of lower quality, as are the speakers. There's no wireless charging, no IP water resistance rating, and the phone is made out of plastic. But at half the price, all of those sins are forgiven, and if you compare the features to other similarly priced phones, the 3A really shines. Now there are a few things that I wish Google did differently, and there are some people who I wouldn't recommend it to, which I'll cover in just a bit. But overall, this phone is a winner and I would highly recommend it. I don't want to get too much into specs, but we have the same rear cameras with a single front that's wider than the Pixel 3 standard, which was a smart move. We have a rear fingerprint scanner, Google Assistant squeeze feature, and the same 4GB of RAM. What really matters is the real world experience. What's it like using the phone day to day? And I have to say, that is really good. No, it's not as good as a proper flagship like the S10 Plus or the 7 Pro, but it's still good and for the price tag, it's excellent. RAM management wasn't an issue for me, and the UI was actually smoother than the Pixel 3s. The CPU is slower, so it's not that, but it's actually thanks to Google optimizing and fixing software bugs ever since their flagship launched. Google made a smart choice to spend money where it matters and is most noticeable the camera, the display, and the speakers. The things that you actually interact with day to day. As I already mentioned, the display and the speakers aren't as good as the Pixel 3s, but the OLED screen and stereo speakers definitely get close and fight way above their price point. The photo quality is really good, basically the same as the Pixel 3s. The algorithms have been tweaked over time, and I noticed the images don't have the same strong bias towards cool white balances, which I'm glad they tweaked. Since we have a single lens camera, zoom shots are still behind phones with a dedicated telephoto lens, but because of Google's photo stacking, they look better than other single systems like the iPhone XRs. Portrait photos oddly now use a 2x digital crop instead of the 1.25 times the Pixel 3 used. I really like the slight crop of the Pixel 3. It limited distortion for close-ups, but still gave a high-quality, great-looking wide portrait. Video recording is still a few years behind the flagships with no 4K60 and poor mic quality, but that's passable at this price point. The main takeaway is that this phone will take better standard photos than any phone under $500 and many that are far more expensive. My only other complaint is the shutter lag. It seems worse than the Pixel 3 and far behind the flagships. In this side-by-side, -side, I pressed the shutter right when Elon was at the top of the swing. The iPhone grabbed the image instantly, every single time, since it's actually consistently taking photos and just saves the photo when you press. The Samsung and OnePlus are behind, but nowhere near as much as the 3A XL, which took the image almost a second later. I complained about this in my S10 Plus review since I noticed myself missing shots of my kids in action, which I probably wouldn't have with the iPhone. If you have little kids, pets, or shoot other quick moving subjects, this could be a deal breaker. Check out our detailed photo comparison to see how it stacks up to three very impressive flagships after this video. Let's get back to the design of this phone. Google needed to cut costs, so the phone is made of plastic. Some reviewers said it feels just as good as the 3, and I could see where they're coming from because of the frosted back, but I could definitely feel that it's plastic as soon as I put my hands on it. With that said, it doesn't feel cheap at all, and most people will put a case on it, and then there is actually no difference what material it's made out of because you're touching the case. On the plus side, the headphone jack is back. It makes a ton of sense why. If you're buying a budget phone, the chances of you not owning Bluetooth headphones is much higher. The forehead and chin are quite large, but so were the Pixel 3s after people used software to cover up that huge notch, so the end results were basically the same. And at this price point, I think this design makes sense. On the positive side, the batteries are large, and that's a huge plus. The 3A XLs is 3700 mAh paired with a less powerful, thus less power draining processor and a lower res display, meaning it will last a long time. If you're a power user on a budget, it will last you more than a full day. Mr. Who's the Boss did a battery shootout and the 3A XL lasted for 8 hours of heavy screen on time longer than any phone he's ever tested, and it even beat out the Zenfone 6 that has a 5000 mAh battery. 
For regular users, the 3A, which has a smaller battery but a more manageable size, should last all day as well. If you'll be playing a lot of games, I'd suggest picking something else up. Maybe the Razer phone, which is now priced similarly. If you want to know more about gaming, check out our gaming comparison to the Pixel 3 after this video. So with all that said, I think Google made a genius move bringing out the Pixel 3a XL. When you consider the price point and feature set, a lot of smart decisions were made on where to focus and where to cut costs. For most people, the 3a and 3a XL will get the job done, and I would recommend it to almost everyone who's looking to buy at this price point other than those who need something with minimal camera shutter lag or hardcore phone gamers. Google has a real winner on their hands, and now that it's at every major carrier in the States, it's going to be in a lot of others. Thanks for checking out our review. If you want to pick up a Pixel 3a or 3a XL, we have some links to some great deals down in the description below. Click right over here to subscribe, and if you want to see our detailed camera comparison, click right over there. This has been Max of Max Tech, and I will see you in the next video.